Hey guys, it's Aaron, and today we're going to talk about customizing your SketchUp for Web window. So SketchUp for Web is great because it does, I mean, a lot of what SketchUp for Desktop does. Um, it's not full robust as the desktop app, obviously, if you're running in an app versus a web application, something that's installed, you're going to get benefits of the computer, that sort of thing. But it does a lot. Um, and while a lot of people don't realize this, there is an ability to go in and kind of customize your main screen so it works and has the information you want in it. So we're going to take a look at how to customize your UI, customize your workspace inside SketchUp for Web. Let's hop in. All right, so here I got a SketchUp for Web window open. Um, Ta-da, that's all there is to it. It's pretty easy. Um, so the level of optimization is not the same as what it can do in desktop, whether you're on Mac or Windows. If you're running desktop, you can, of course, go in and, you know, change where your, your windows are and you can add toolbars and that kind of thing. That option is not available in uh, the web app. The web app is limited in the fact that everything has to run inside the browser window, but we can customize what information is here based on your workflow. So uh, first thing I want to point out is, of course, the windows on the right side. Uh, you can keep these open. You can keep open as many or as few as you like. Um, that was a weird one to click because that was through the warehouse. But if I, as I go down and I start opening more of these, you'll see what happens is you start to scroll. So there is not a way to have multiple you know, tabs open like you can on Windows. Um, I can't have multiple floating windows like I can on Mac, but you can have them all here and they'll automatically you know, start scrolling when you go past what's visible. Um, you also have the ability to quickly snap them in and snap them out, hitting this little little collapse button. This is nice because you don't have to go open each window. You could open the windows you want and then pop it in and pop it out as you model. Those of you who have watched me model before know that I really like when I have as much of the modeling window visible as possible. So I try to keep it collapsed like this. But it is nice knowing that I don't have to come in here and click this, you know, one, two, three buttons to pull them all open again. I can just click here and everything I had open will pop right open again. The other option you have on here is each of them has this little tiny uh, little handle, I guess, scroll handle here, where I can make the windows bigger or smaller. This just means if I want to have, you know, a few options available on the screen at a time, I probably would not have instructor here, um, I can do that and I can kind of I don't need to see all my colors. I just want to see the one I have there and then maybe the top row of ones below. And what that'll give you is a second scroll bar right here on the inside where I can scroll there. Or, of course, I can always grab that and make it bigger, smaller. So, I don't know. I don't want to tell you exactly how to set all this up, but do know that you have the ability to bring up whatever windows you want and then collapse them back in just by hitting this button. Again, like I said, as far as I'm concerned, when I go in and start modeling, I want to see the model. The information over here becomes important now and then, but for the most part, I want as much screen space as I can get, and that's what this, this view does. All right, some other things. Uh, we can't change the bottom toolbar, so you have measurements on the right side. You have your prompt about the current command on the left side. And there's a couple buttons over here, just worth, worth noting right here. Uh, the first one is help, and this just brings up help to various uh, places to get help basically what that is that's it says right there need help here's help um next to that we do have the language button so i'm assuming that if you're at this point where you're using sketchup web you've already found this and it's in the appropriate language if not if you're normally a french speaker and you've been using english because you understand it well enough but want it in your native language you can come over here and change it by hitting that the third icon down here is your input device. And this is kind of cool because you can on the fly switch between mouse and trackpad. So if I'm sitting at my desk, I have my mouse in my hand. It's just how I function. So nine times out of 10, if I'm using this, I'm gonna be using mouse. But if every once in a while I'm sitting on my couch and I'm working on a model or uh, on site, I'm trying to add dimensions or, or you know move a wall around based on, on a job I'm on, I can switch over to trackpad just by clicking right down here and then clicking that. And that, of course, is going to change not only what the primary input tool is, but unlock some shortcuts based on your input device. You can see there is an option right here for more settings. When I click more settings, it's going to pull up 
this portion of the settings window and allow you to change that. Um, this is nice, but if you actually want to get into all the settings, you can come up to the uh, little pancake menu right here and go to app settings. And that's going to pull up not just navigation, which we just saw, but also general and accessibility. These are some of the other presets that I have the ability to save in here. Uh, the top stuff, pretty self-explanatory auto save. How often you want to auto save? Uh, do you want it to auto save? And then purging. This is kind of a big deal because uh, this didn't always happen. So right now I can say, when do I want to purge? Purge means get rid of the stuff that's not actively being used in your model. Every time you bring in something from 3D Warehouse or you pick a color out of the palette or anything like that, it goes into your model and is saved. Purging says, get rid of that stuff. I don't need it in my model. I just need what I actually have like in the modeling area. So this is my option that says, how do I want to do this? Do I always want to purge every time I close? Do I never want to purge? I have mine set on ask every time. I would rather have it pop up and verify whether I want to purge rather than have it dump something out and go, oh, yeah, I wasn't using that, but I was gonna. So uh, I usually set that there. We have some other options down here, uh, the move tool. So normally if you're in here and uh, I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna click on move, I'm gonna click on tie here. You get these handles right here. These handles let you rotate uh, selected groups or components. That can be, some people don't like that. And, and it, it makes sense if I'm, if I'm like zoomed, oops, you know what I did? I changed my input. <laughs> so there it was, that was acting weird because I didn't like that or because I had the wrong setting. So if I go in like this, it can be kind of hard to, you know, oops, I wanted to move that and I accidentally grabbed a handle. Some people don't like that, don't want those handles on there. Easy enough to change in settings. You can just flip this on or off. And of course we have another thing here about the language and then also the default template. The default template's gonna look very similar, but change your default materials. If you like accessibility, this is just colors. This is if, if any of these look like they're the same to you or look like gray instead of colorful, uh, you have the ability to change that, just pick on it and then choose a different color. So you get to set that however you like. And then of course, navigation. We talked about this earlier because this is what the button in the lower left brings up. You can change your device, mouse to trackpad. You see when it's mouse, that's it. That's all you got. It behaves like the three button mouse in SketchUp, left button, left clicks, right button, right clicks. Holding down the scroll wheel allows you to orbit, scrolling the scroll wheel up and down zooms. Automatic, that's what happens. If I switch to trackpad though, I have some options here about what to do with a two finger swipe. So if I swipe two fingers across the touchpad, uh, I can choose if it's gonna do orbit, pan, or zoom. Based on the one I choose here, I'm gonna have my modifier options list, list, listed down below. So if I hold shift and swipe, it's gonna pan. If I hold control and swipe, it's gonna zoom. And if I change that from orbit to pan, then it's gonna change shift swipe to orbit instead. So you have three shortcuts basically by swiping and holding down modifier keys and you control the orientation of those by setting that value right there. Um, I have some other options which are, this is really kind of cool because uh, sometimes the way I want my scroll mouse or my scroll direction to work is different if I'm scrolling up and down a web page versus zooming in and out of a 3D model. And what this lets you do is it lets you change your scroll direction for each specific zoom command. So I can actually change if I want to invert zoom or orbit or pan. So if I drag to the left, it'll move to the right, that sort of thing, totally up to you, as well as sensitivity. So this is a, this is a nice, this is a nice fine tuning option. If you're one of those people who based on your mouse, when you want to zoom in on something, you're just scroll, 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 scroll. Okay. I'm there. You might want to turn up your zoom sensitivity. So a quick scroll shoots you into the model uh, further, but that's your call. But it's nice because you have the option there. Um, so all of this stuff that we've talked about so far is set up. Once you save it, it'll save. And when you log back into SketchUp for web with your, your same login, it'll already be set. You'll be good. Um, the biggest thing though, I'm going to say the biggest control in here, of course, is the toolbar where your tools are on the left side and you can edit this. So just a quick one searches at the top. This is nice because if I, I want to go to a command, I don't remember the name of it or what the icon looks like. You can always hit search and tell it what I'm looking for. It'll bring it up. Not just will tell you what the command is you're looking for, but it'll give you a button on the screen you can click on to just go right to that command, which is awesome. Below that is a bunch of tools. And we're going to talk about this in just one second. But first, I want to mention these three below. So these three below are the last three tools you used that are not 
on your toolbar. So this toolbar is a set group of tools. Anything I use that's not one of these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 tools will show up down here when I use it. So in addition to these 12 tools, I recently used Zoom Extents, uh, Three Point Arc, and Follow Me. If I want to use anything other than these 12 plus these three, I hit the little dot, dot, dot down here, and it shows me all the rest of the commands. Now, this is where we talk about customization. That was review. If I want some of these commands permanently in this toolbar, all I have to do is drag them on there. That includes the three down below or any of them in here. So I'm going to grab uh, some of our solid tools, and I'm just going to put this right down here and drop that in there. See that? Now it stayed on there. So I'm going to grab another one. Put this one down here too, and another one. So what I'm at now, 15, and that's it. So I can have up to 15 tools in this toolbar that's set, plus the last three non-standard tools I used. So good news is if you only use 18 tools, you can have them on screen at all times. If not, think about what the 15 are you're most commonly using and get them on here on, the, on this toolbar. I'm gonna take these solid tools back off which shows here's how I remove them. And again, I don't have to just take off those. If I want to drop down because I don't use pan or tape measure very often, I can do that and get a smaller toolbar here. This too will save. So when I leave and come back, I should see the same toolbars here, or same, sorry, same commands on my toolbar here every time I come into SketchUp. So as you find which commands you use the most often, get them here in the toolbar. Uh, the ones that you've used recently that aren't in here will show up here, but that's it. That covers customizing SketchUp for web. That gets you the most of the space you have and uh, basically sets you up to see the commands you want to see and the tools you need most often. So there's a little bit of review in there. Some of that stuff is like introduction to SketchUp for web, um, but I want to kind of give context, I guess. I don't know. I talked about it. I can't undo it now. I can't untalk. Um, but I realized we never had a video that talked about like just what are all my settings? What do I have all to set up and how do I do that? So if you haven't done that before and you use SketchUp for web uh, and you find yourself like going and getting stuff again and again and again, hopefully that helps you out. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, leave us a comment down below. Is there a particular UI setting that you really like in SketchUp for Web? Is there something you think is missing? Uh, we'd love to hear that. Uh, or do you have a different way of setting things up that differ from the way that I recommend? I'd love to hear that too. Uh, best of all though, you had an idea that you think make a cool video? Tell us about that in the comments too. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.